good evening, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, many thanks for coming this evening. Uh, Global Entrepreneurship Week uh, kicked off yesterday, and uh, I'm delighted to be here representing that. And uh, thank you very much to Royal Holloway University for the invite. Um, and thanks to Paul for the invite in particular. Um, it's a pleasure to uh, share the stage with uh, Graham and, uh, from Innovate UK and Roya from Enterprise M3 Growth Hub. Uh, my name's Paul Zimmerman, and I am delighted to have been asked to speak to you tonight about a subject that everyone in business and technology is eager to learn more about, and that is, of course, artificial intelligence. Uh, the subject of artificial intelligence and how on earth we as business leaders are supposed to get our heads around this fast-growing topic that seems to be evolving uh, every day. Uh, I'm the COO for a company called the INV Group. Uh, we're a fast-growing tech company headquartered down the road in Woking. I don't know which one. Oh, it's that way. Um, and we pride ourselves on being super entrepreneurial, which I think is a really keen uh, sort of theme for uh, today and for the week itself. Our company has about 70 employees. Uh, Arroyo, you mentioned a strong talent part of uh, your side of your world. Uh, we invest heavily in apprenticeships. Uh, my good friend Brett here in the corner is actually uh, one of our apprentices at the minute. Um, we win all sorts of awards for our apprenticeship program uh, in the UK. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got like two thirds of our company are basically uh, apprentices or ex-apprentice graduates. Um, we also, interestingly, um, and I think I'd be more than happy to have a chat with you guys uh, afterwards about this, we've never taken any external funding whatsoever. So we're completely bootstrapped, uh, which is an interesting topic uh, on whether or not that's the right thing to do if you're uh, interested in starting your own business or in fact you're an entrepreneur doing that. Uh, but I'm here today uh, not only because I'm an entrepreneur, uh, like many in the room, but I've also been early in tech for a number of years. Guess how many years? Well, gosh. Uh, as a child, I was surrounded by tech, and our family had an Apple II uh, growing up in the 80s, uh, the world's first mainstream personal computer. Some will debate that, I'm sure, uh, including my boss uh, back at base, but I'll stick with the Apple. Um, and I was very, very lucky because in uh, 1984, when Steve Jobs went on a national tour, for Apple customers in America to introduce them to the recently launched Macintosh, my father took me along. So I wound up being something like 16 years of age, maybe 15, not really sure, and I got to go to an auditorium and see this guy speak, and it was uh, really made an, an impression on me. Um, two years later, in 1986, I wound up taking a Macintosh to my university, there you go, uh, up in New Hampshire, and then uh, this is what we all looked like back in the 80s with our Macintosh. That could have been me on the left-hand side, don't know, uh, I hope it's not, because, uh, I don't know, anyway. But uh, yeah, hilarious, I think, because we all looked that happy uh, in 1986, um, but there you go. Um, yes, and then I moved here, and I was lucky enough to join a company called Amazon.com in 1999, when it was just an online bookstore. Uh, funnily enough, I, I drove Brad up here earlier, and uh, we were doing the winding roads, and I moved out to Woking when I was working for Amazon in Slough, and this was my commute uh, for a long time. Um, I used to have to walk through the warehouse to get to my desk. I was employee number three on the music team. And uh, this is what the website looked like, not when I joined, but actually uh, several months later, uh, just to give you a sense of how old I am and also how old Amazon is. Um, there was no AWS. There was not even an Amazon marketplace. I spent the next 15 years uh, delivering e-commerce and digital media strategies for not just Amazon, but Play.com, Firebox, and a host of other major high street brands. And then that kind of brings me on to here. So nine years ago, I joined uh, up with some friends to create the IMV Group. Uh, we are leaders in open source technologies that help deliver communication apps to large enterprises and the UK government. And I've always used uh, technology to push my business forward. Um, at one of our subsidiaries, Infdev, uh, which I kind of am helping to sort of get going here, um, uh, we use open source technologies and cloud services to continually drive our products, services, and customers forward. Every single person in our organization, isn't that right, Brett? Uh, regardless of whether or not they're in tech, is strongly encouraged to use artificial intelligence. Which brings us on to the topic of the evening, how artificial intelligence will affect your business. Um, now, we are fast approaching a major birthday, okay? Uh, so on November 30th, last year, what are we, the 14th today? November 30th last year is when OpenAI released ChatGPT 3.5 to the public. 
Uh, it was not released with much fanfare or publicity. And two days later, on Friday, uh, December 2nd, I stood up in front of the entire company uh, for, a, for a general sort of previously scheduled uh, tech update, and I asked to see a show of hands of the 70 people in the company uh, who had used ChatGPT yet. And the answer, including myself, was only four. Interesting, right? So we're a deep tech kind of company, and only four of us, uh, two or three days after the launch of ChatGPT 3.5, had actually uh, used it. Now, like all good advances in tech, though, the few became many as the buzz uh, and excitement around using something so simple and so easy to drive new insights grew and grew. And fast forward a year, of course, and the entire planet seems to be aware of ChatGPT and AI. Uh, every digital leader, a uh, tech leader, is scrambling around like mad, trying to figure out how to inject AI into their strategies. CEOs and boards are being challenged by shareholders to figure out how AI will affect their businesses. I see it a lot like this. Uh, one of our challenges about talking about the subject is that it's similar to the previous conversations around big buzz phrases like technology or digital themselves. Large enterprises tend to carve these areas out because they are so large and impactful, and by doing so, uh, they tend to create siloed organizations um, within companies. So the area of artificial intelligence runs the risk of having the same thing happen to it, be it placed in a far distant corner, almost out of sight of the day-to-day -day business operations, with the same senior leaders expecting someone else will take care of that big, hairy, complex thing. So let's try and figure out where AI belongs in the corporate dialogue. Uh, but first, for tonight, uh, let me deal with a couple of caveats about this talk, because this is a difficult one. AI is a very, very deep subject, of course. You could go any manner of ways on this. Uh, we are not going to talk about the history of AI. When the rather clumsy term of artificial intelligence was first developed at my alma mater, of all places, Dartmouth, at the Dartmouth Conference in 1956, uh, Marvin Minsky, famous uh, AI sort of godfather is in there, as are a lot of these guys. Um, and we're also not going to talk about the subsequent years of development of artificial intelligence that took place for generations prior to last year's release of ChatGPT uh, 3.5. Anyone know what that is? Oh, no, this. Yeah. It's the first computer that beat the human at chess, right? Indeed. Any ideas what year it was? Ooh, not clear. Judging by that picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was, yeah, I think it was 97, but I, I could be wrong. Uh, and it's uh, basically uh, when Gary Kasparov was defeated by IBM's uh, Deep Blue uh, was the name of that. Anyway, um, now I'm also uh, conscious of the fact uh, it would be remiss of me. I'm standing in the hallowed halls of Royal Holloway, uh, and I, I should be mentioning uh, the work of uh, Royal Holloway's lecturer, Chris Watkins, Professor Chris Watkins, who actually spoke at one of our Surrey Dev meetups down in Woking. Uh, he came to the very first ever one. This is him in our offices uh, speaking about AI back in January. Um, he is credited with inventing the early version of a reinforcement learning model called Q-Learning. I promise that's it on the history, uh, but um, there you go. Well, what I would say quite simply is that AI has been around for a very long time and not just the last year, which is what a lot of people actually think, right? Um, so we shouldn't be surprised as business leaders that its time has finally come. Now, I'm also not gonna touch on a variety, on the variety or the different types of AI. Like this, there's sometimes uh, considered to be seven different types of AI, uh, from narrow AI uh, to the theory of mind to self-aware AI. Not gonna get into any of that if you're interested we can have a chat later. <laughs> Nor am I gonna get into the uh, a sort of uh, large and broad topics or jargon, depending on your point of view, uh, of major components of AI, like machine learning, data mining, or natural language processing. Again, um, actually, don't ask me afterwards. Uh, probably go find Chris Watkins and get him down here and we can have a chat. Uh, he's a lovely guy, by the way. Um, so what I am gonna do is try to give you a general sense of where AI is going to impact your business. So we return to the birthday cake, and that is where we are near, we're celebrating almost today uh, the one-year anniversary of what is arguably the most important and accessible use of artificial intelligence today. The injection of AI into the very fabric of human communication, spoken and written word, images and video, 
numbers, calculations, and code. Uh, if I were on the selection committee for the Time Magazine Person of the Year for 2023, uh, which will be announced in a few weeks' time, uh, I'd seriously think about awarding it to ChatGPT. And yes, these two pictures are created very easily uh, using ChatGPT's integration with another product of OpenAI called DAL-E, if you're familiar with it, which can create images from natural language prompts. I literally asked Chat yesterday, please imagine a 2023 Time Person of the Year cover image of their magazine in which the recipient of the prestigious award is ChatGPT. Bizarrely, this is what Chat came up with. I'm not sure I agree with this. I'm not really sure I think that Chat thinks it's uh, a person or not. I'm not really sure, but interesting nonetheless. And I really do think that if you had to look at a movement or something significant, obviously discounting what's happened uh, in the Middle East in the last uh, eight weeks, um, that this is obviously one of the biggest stories of the year without a shadow of a doubt. From school kids using Chat to create essays for their homework, to octogenarians, who have stumbled upon a cure for loneliness by creating conversations with AI, to the millions of folks who say they work in tech. Over 100 million early adopters worldwide are using ChatGPT actively every week. Every single week. It reached 100 million users faster than any app or product in history. But why? And why are we using it and other AI? Well, for the same reason that we use this, right? A calculator or spreadsheets like this. For years, we've been comfortable with software that does spell checks for us, and we really only get mildly annoyed when autocorrect gives us a word that we don't want in WhatsApp. So the number one reason that we should be using AI is the fact that it's uh, nothing more than a tool. And at the minute, it's not sentient. It doesn't know us. It doesn't know how to think. Again, let's get Chris down here. We can talk about why it doesn't know how to think, but we're not going to get into that. Trust me, at the minute, it doesn't know how to think. Um, so it's really nothing more than a tool, but it's the best tech tool we've ever seen. When we talk about AI, we need to think about it in the same way that we would think about the general term for technology. It applies to everything. As humans, we seek out tools to make our lives easier, more efficient, and safer but we also use tools for speed. What was difficult to achieve previously can usually be done more quickly with tools. Using incredibly natural language prompts, we can find, discover, and imagine almost anything more quickly than we ever could with traditional search engines and queries. Do you remember search engines? <sighs> wow. In the old days, and I mean 2021, we would have spent time thinking of a query and we would have then typed that query into Google or another search engine. And then we would have been bombarded with ads and other irrelevant information as we struggled to get somewhere answering the question. And then, if we're lucky, we would have gotten something uh, approximating our answer that either satisf satisfied us or uh, took us down another avenue for us to explore further, creating more work for our exhausted minds. Now, today, ChatGPT and other large language models help us not just to answer these questions more quickly, but more importantly, they help us push our imagination much, much, much farther. The query has stopped being a query and has evolved into a full-blown conversation. This is me on any given day having little thoughts all by myself about little fluffy clouds. And actually, me with ChatGPT or other AI is more like this connected to another person of me, who's actually connected to the entire internet. This is how I describe this new generation of AI. It's like having a conversation with myself, but one who's smarter, more creative, more succinct, significantly faster at arriving at answers. This is a version of myself that is able to travel to the outer reaches of the internet in record speed to retrieve information and create ideas like never before. And I'm not saying for one second that AI is always right, but then neither am I. Right? Uh, neither of us, it turns out, is perfect. And unfortunately, the AI version of myself is not younger, richer, or better looking than my actual self either. So in our business, our creativity, our execution, and our speed to get stuff done has skyrocketed as staff have realized that they too can have these conversations with themselves with the help of AI. Halfway through this talk, I realized that the subject is not necessarily how AI would impact your business, but rather it just simply will affect your business.
Okay? So let's pick off a few major operational areas within a business and see just how AI can help make a positive impact to driving your business forward. And let's go first with R&D. I've just pulled out a few areas of some broad operational areas within a business. We're going to go through these. If you get bored, feel free to just put your hand up and go, that's fine, move on. But innovation ideation, okay? The creation of new product or service ideas, lever leveraging market trends and customer feedback, research analysis, efficient efficiently processing large volumes of research data to extract actionable insights. I'm going to show you an example in a sec. Prototyping assistance. Provide conceptual and design guidance for the development of prototypes. Competitive analysis, easy. Get out there and analyze your competitors' products and strategies to identify opportunities for yourself. And project planning, assist in outlining R&D, project plans, timelines, and resource requirements. Let's take a look at an example here, okay? This is the London Data Store from Greater London Authority. Uh, and over the weekend, basically, I took a 9 meg file. It's actually below the fold there, but they've got all sorts of data sets on the uh, website there. Uh, I took a 9 meg file, and I dumped it into, it's, a, it's basically a data set of the population uh, growth models. I simply dumped it into ChatGPT, and then I asked Chat to start analyzing. Okay, literally. How are the geographical areas determined in this analysis? Are they by London Borough? Um, then I asked uh, chat here, you can see what it's doing. It's to give me a really good sense of actually this 9 meg file. I could have poured a lot of time and energy into that file, analyzed that file, and it's actually given me this within seconds, basically. It's analyzed the file and kind of said, okay, this is how your files, uh, your data structures are, are structured. And then what time frame is being considered for the analysis, and it tells me. And then basically it gives me this, which is I asked chat to summarize uh, the data by London Borough and to show me the percent increase or decrease by borough. It tells me that London's population growth by 2050 will be 29%, and that the borough with the most growth over that period will be Tower Hamlets, which will grow by 43%, whereas the city of London population will only grow by 19% over that time. This whole process took about five minutes. So what's interesting about this from my standpoint, as somebody who's interested in growing my business, is let's say hypothetically, I wanted to go uh, talk to the Tower Hamlets uh, Council, or borough rather, well, I know that there's going to be massive population growth in that uh, borough for the next few years. So where am I going to put my energy, if that might be attractive to me? So you can see from a research standpoint, where there's open data, it becomes incredibly useful to actually use something like this. OK, I'm going to try and zip through a few of these. Marketing, content creation. Marketing, by the way, is, is probably the easy slam dunk. Everyone gets it, so, but I'm, I'm going to zip through this. But if you don't, raise your hand, and we'll dive into a, a couple of these. Content creation. We can develop various marketing materials, such as blog posts, social media content, and email campaigns. Uh, market research, you can analyze customer feedback, social media conversations, personalization, tailor digital marketing efforts to individual customers based on their interactions and behaviors. Uh, your SEO strategy, if you have one, you optimize that with your website content, stick it into chat, and basically language models can suggest keywords and create SEO-friendly content, improving online visibility. And finally, campaign analysis. Evaluate the performance of marketing campaigns, analyze the data, and provide insights on effectiveness and areas for improvement. All dead simple using chat. Sales. Lead generation. Lead gen, it's called in some places. Utilize market and customer data to identify and prioritize uh, potential sales leads. Your sales strategy. So let's say, for instance, that you wanted to in, in, uh, start using something like a med pick strategy. Uh, don't know how to implement that. You whack it into chat, and you basically give it some information about yourself, and away you go. CRM enhancements. Um, integrate AI insights into CRM systems. We use HubSpot, where we are, OK? Uh, for a deeper understanding of customer behaviors and needs. HubSpot, by the way, is all over this space. Um, sales forecasting. Predicts uh, future sales trends, helping in inventory and resource planning. And customer interaction scripts. We use this one extensively, OK? Which is develop scripts for sales calls or emails personalized to different customer segments. Finance. Data analysis, uh, automation of routine tasks, risk assessment, fraud detection, budget planning, all of these things become easier with AI. Operations, um, this is a subject very close to our heart, actually, because one of our uh, subsidiaries uh, actually works on operational improvements and process enhancements within businesses. So process optimization, identify inefficiencies and recommend improvements, supply chain management, customer service, uh, AI-driven chatbots, I'll get onto that in a second. Uh, there's a company called Intercom, which has been working on this space for a very long time. Uh, quality control, resource management, 
All these things in operations, easy to uh, change with artificial intelligence. Um, I mentioned uh, Intercom. Um, so Intercom's been working with developing AI-powered uh, chatbots for years and was one of the first companies to integrate with ChatGPT. Um, they did so very, very early, probably around January or February. Um, they've got an Irish base and uh, a US sort of uh, Silicon Valley base. And um, they were one of the first off the blocks with integrating ChatGPT. Um, chatbots powered by AI are great examples of technologies which use natural language to assist uh, with customer, customer service uh, support. Um, a subject very close to our heart, technology. So anyone in the room actually do any kind of software development or engineering? Fantastic, okay, great. Um, so software development, you can accelerate the development processes with code generation, debugging assistance, and algorithm optimization. IT support, automate responses to routine IT queries, provide first level troubleshooting, including IT service efficiency. Tech innovation, very bug standards, cybersecurity analysis, you can aid um, yourself in identifying potential security vulnerabilities and recommend preventive measures. All this you can do on your own. System integration, assist in integrating various business systems and technologies for seamless operations. Um, our team at InfDev, I mentioned our tech company, InfDev, um, they include many, many software engineers. Uh, we're able to use AI to generate code, especially when starting out on a project. So we use a GitHub uh, Copilot or Amazon's Code Whisper, uh, and we can kickstart any coding project off of that. Um, this is um, sort of an example of what you can do with uh, a bug fixing or, or debugging kind of work. Uh, can you tell me and show me what's wrong with the following tracking code? Code is this. Please write in English language. Your output is like this. It seems there is a couple of syntax errors and typos in your tracking code. Let me correct them for you. Dead simple. We use AI to perform an analysis of our code to find bottlenecks, uh, redundant code, and to suggest improvements. Uh, all in real time, AI can actually help us now create documentation as well as we write our code, and that helps us uh, with our customers. So our customers want to see us how we share uh, our, our knowledge. They don't want us to keep all of our software development knowledge to ourselves, so we pass it to them, and then they go, oh, thanks very much, and the documentation is actually created on the fly. Pretty amazing. With legal and compliance, obviously, there's a, there's a big subject for uh, uh, chat GPT and artificial intelligence, which means you can, you can do all sorts, and actually, the big industries that are going to be affected by artificial intelligence, I wasn't really going to get into this. I don't have any slides dedicated to the subject. I could probably talk about this, like which industries will be most impacted uh, by artificial intelligence. To me, lawyers and consultants. Um, from a legal standpoint, uh, document review, you can streamline the review of all your legal documents, identifying key clauses and potential compliance issues. That's a big subject for us because we are ISO uh, 27001. ISO 9001 and ISO 14001, three of the big sort of compliance um, uh, certifications. And for us, being non-compliant is a major, major issue. So for us, that's a really big deal. Uh, regulatory monitoring, we can keep abreast of regulatory changes and advise on necessary adjustments to maintain compliance. Contract management, I love this one. Assisting in drafting, reviewing, and managing of contracts for efficiency and compliance. Uh, legal research, I don't personally use it all that much, but I know uh, my daughter's uh, studying to be a lawyer. She, um, you know, she's... Uh, she and her generation are, are using uh, AI in a different way to the way that um, we would have uh, been able to use a tool like that. Quickly sift through legal databases for case laws or precedents relevant to legal uh, issues. And of course, policy development, aid in developing and updating company policies to ensure they meet legal standards. Let's not leave out HR. Uh, you've got recruitment, uh, which you can do the automation of initial CV screening already happening. If you haven't seen it happening, it's already happening across a large number of businesses. Uh, focus, focusing on specific qualifications and experience, improving uh, recruitment efficiency, employee engagement. You can look at analyzing employee feedback to enhance the workplace uh, culture and engagement, training and development, uh, develop personalized training programs, performance analysis, of course, uh, provide insights into employee performance and suggest areas for improvement, and policy creation in the aid of the development of updating HR policies, ensuring they are comprehensive and compliant with uh, current laws. Uh, here's an example so, um, of a great recruitment challenge for AI. Yesterday, I asked ChatGPT to imagine it was a prime minister of the UK. I said, imagine you need to sack your home secretary and move your foreign secretary over to the home office. Who would you suggest becomes the new foreign secretary? And it gave me that. And I thought, actually, hang on a second. Maybe the data set's a little bit old. I wasn't really sure about that. But there you go. Anyway, on to the new stuff. Just over a week ago, uh, uh, OpenAI, the parent company of ChatGPT, 
was leading up to the one-year anniversary of uh, ChatGPT 3.5, and their chief dude, uh, as we say in the States, uh, Sam Altman, uh, took to the stage at a keynote to unveil several measures to keep OpenAI ahead of its many competitors. So for any engineers in the room, you probably know this story, but if uh, you're not an engineer in the room, maybe you don't know this story. Of course, there were predictable stuff uh, about making ChatGPT faster and cheaper and more efficient, and that's all amazing. And on its own, it probably would have been, by the way, a significant announcement. But their dev day, or their developer day last week, uh, was really significant for, in my opinion, a couple of the things. Um, so OpenAI and ChatGPT is creating a store, OK? Or a marketplace. I'm familiar with the Amazon marketplace myself. eBay is a marketplace. Loads of things are marketplaces these days. Um, the App Store on Apple or or Chrome, no doubt, is an app store as well, the, Google, the Android uh, uh, app store. But this is what they're doing, is they're kind of getting in early on this concept of a store or marketplace. So they're creating mini GPTs, um, as they call them. Uh, they're built for a specific function, either by ChatGPT or anyone. There's going to be a store of them, like a place you can go either buy them or use them. Um, and they're built with speech. Hmm. Hello. So um, this is already uh, some examples of them. They started cropping up in the last week. Anyone else used these? Anyone seen these? A couple of hands, yes? OK. Um, so these are just some examples that actually, if, you hit, if you're paying for the uh, GPT-4 model and you've got the enter enterprise version, they might even be there in the non-enterprise version. I'm not really sure. Um, but in a week, they've just started to release a few of these. You can see a couple of specific examples here. Um, you can become a better negotiator. You they can help you with tech support, the one at the bottom. I was actually using that yesterday. Um, I tried, didn't actually work it into my presentation, but I was like, what's the native uh, way in a Mac system to basically grab a video uh, of sort of moving images in my Mac? I didn't know how to do that. I could have asked Brett. He probably could have told me. But um, actually, the tech support GPT actually told me. Um, the uh, data analysis that you saw of the Greater London Authority uh, data, I did that using the data analysis GPT here, OK? Um, so basically, um, what's amazing about this, this is not the most amazing thing about this announcement, by the way, <laughs> OK? So I'm not an engineer. I'm not technical, right? Um, and the most amazing thing about this announcement was that you'll be able to build your own mini GPTs just by talking to chat GPT, OK? And so this is quite frankly insane. So we had uh, a, a tech meetup uh, down at our offices. Uh, actually, we live streamed this keynote at our offices. And then following that, we had a conversation with a lot of tech leaders in the Woking and Guilford area in our offices. No one uh, uh, <laughs> was bored or you know, lacking amazement at this. It was like, wow, it was insane. Two reasons why this announcement is actually really, really major news, in my opinion, right? One, many GPTs will become agents that will greatly automate thousands of tasks in a normal business. OK? If you haven't heard it yet, you will hear this come up a lot. Lots of ordinary tasks in business will be just automated, like very, very easily, which is a good thing if you're a small, nimble business. Um, perhaps a bad thing if you're a consultant or offering a very niche area of one of these things that GPTs could go after. I won't get into that. The second reason that this is astounding is that you'll be able to create these agents, as I say, without any real knowledge of code uh, in the background. And this is sort of the beginning of, of the mass sort of movement of no code. So if you're interested in this subject, again, let's have a chat afterwards. But this is like you take an idiot like me, and you basically say, talk to ChatGPT. Uh, I'd like to do this. And I'd like to make a ticketing app sort of thing. How do I do that? And you just speak to ChatGPT. And it's going to actually come up with a way to do that, a little mini GPT that is dedicated to that particular purpose. Um, right, so if you haven't already gathered, um, Silicon Valley behemoths are in an arms race uh, to gain a superior position in this fast-moving market. Uh, OpenAI has stolen a march on the other big names, forcing many to move faster than they originally wanted to. Uh, Microsoft invested billions in OpenAI <laughs> to help it secure Microsoft's future. Uh, that's my opinion, probably not Microsoft's. 
uh, and integrate it, uh, integrate it with Bing and MS365, although Paul Scott is single-handedly flying the flag for Microsoft these days, which I like. Um, right, so uh, next up was Google, um, who launched their similar uh, initiative called BARD. Uh, I'm not going to give you an opinion about what I think about BARD, maybe later. Um, having spent years talking quietly about this space, um, but they also hedged their bets by investing in Anthropic. Uh, Anthropic is basically uh, founded by a couple of folks who used to work at, at OpenAI, ex-engineers. In fact, I think they've got a, a partner team, like a coupled up team who's working there. Um, or maybe siblings, not sure. Um, then Amazon also got into the act, and obviously with their AWS division, they also invested uh, billions in Anthropic. Then Google followed that up with more investment in Anthropic the month or two after Amazon did. And it's all gone crazy. And then you got Facebook, uh, or Meta, uh, which has released a credible uh, open source uh, language model called Llama, uh, which being open source, for those who aren't aware, means that anyone can access the code behind it and develop it alongside other global developers. Um, you've got a lot of independent developers who are kind of starting to turn their own open source initiatives uh, into uh, putting it into a place like Hugging Face, which is aiming to be a marketplace for open source uh, projects. And then no one really knows what Apple's doing, but apparently Apple's saying basically, ah, don't worry about it, AI is already in all of our products and you're already using AI and therefore we're dominant in AI, which is kind of, you know, all that said, uh, what are the essential skills uh, we need to foster within our organizations as we embrace AI? What will we need our teams to consider? What skills are required from our current and our future workforce? And what do we need to uh, do to help provide leadership on this subject in the future? Well, just my opinion, feel free to disagree. One is creativity. Remember, go back to point one, this thing is nothing more than a tool, okay? So when people get kind of frustrated with me and they say, well, oh, uh, I'm not really sure I got the right response from chat GPT or whatever AI they're using. Well, then I think actually to me, I just think, well, try again. Why haven't you just tweaked your prompt or tweaked your question? Just go at it again, right? So it requires a great amount of creativity actually to actually work with AI. And also don't forget, it's like having a conversation with yourself. Would you stop there? Stop treating it like a Google search query. Start treating it like it's a conversation with yourself. Uh, number two, communication skills, pretty much self-evident. You gotta be able to talk, you gotta be able to communicate with something in order to actually be good at it. And it's surprising how um, that is not necessarily something that, uh, for me anyway, uh, it's surprising how you actually have to teach that skill sometimes in a workforce. Uh, curiosity. If you're not curious, give up, right? You've gotta be curious to use AI. Um, uh, because again, the whole point of a conversation, if you're not really curious about, it's like meeting somebody um, at, a, at a thing like this and you get to know them, and you have a conversation with them, and you just kill it after like five seconds. Would you stop there? No, right? You're gonna carry on, so be curious. Uh, number four, perseverance. Um, and then finally is accepting the fact that AI is not perfect. And the number of times I have heard people say to me in the last year, oh, well, I tried ChatGPT, and it gave me some wrong answers, so I quit. Uh, like, okay, great, good for you. So that's mainly the essential skills that you need for using AI. And there's gonna be loads more, but these are the ones that I think are really, really important. Um, so, when the technology crosses the threshold of being managed and developed by few players to the point of mass adoption, we often talk about these times as being an inflection point. You can think about e-commerce. You can think about social media. You can think about a whole load of other technologies throughout the course of technological advancement, going back before there was electricity, right? Uh, this is one of those times. And that is why you as business leaders uh, care, and arguably that is why you're here. Uh, it's because it's become unavoidable. You need to pay heed to the inexorable sort of march of progress of technology and artificial intelligence. And if you and your employees, and I mean all of them, are not using ChatGPT or similar types of artificial intelligence, today, start. At our tech division, InfDev, we are constantly thinking about ways in which this market is evolving. We use these technologies every single day to improve all areas of our business. As business leaders and entrepreneurs, you should too. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, getting to know some of you already. If you're interested in having a chat with me uh, afterwards about how I would use AI if I was in your shoes, I'd be more than happy to connect. Um, also, I mentioned Surrey Devs. This is a tech meetup that we run down in the Woking area. Feel free to get in touch. That'll take you to hopefully our LinkedIn uh, group where you can sign up, nice and easy. Um, and then um, that's open to anybody, by the way. You don't have to be technically minded. Uh, feel free to uh, get in touch. Brett and I kind of run it every month. The next one will be third week of January. 
And we've got a lovely guy uh, coming to speak who will be talking about how he uses chat to actually uh, write better code, uh, particularly for open source technologies like Drupal. Um, so he's dead keen on that. And this is me. Uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm more than happy to have a chat with you um, in some sort of uh, place or another time or dimension or whatever. So here you go. This is me. <laughs> Thank you.